right, today we're talking about the glute bridge with a band, and I'm going to show you why we're adding on bands and taking off bands, how we add stability, how we add load, and what that load means to the lower back. And I've got the lovely Claire here today, who is also helping me out on my lumbar spine course in three weeks' time. Now, with this glute bridge, the beautiful thing about this is, is it's an unloaded hip hinge. So we use it both for knees and hips, we also use it for lower backs. Now, when you're using it for a lower back, you're trying to improve your hip hinging ability, trying to get the glutes and the hips doing the extension work, not the lower back doing the extension work. It trains you to make sure that that core part of that lower back stays in a stiff position. So some people will do an articulated bridge. So if you show me an articulated bridge for me, Claire, and that's where they roll up. Okay, so they go into flexion before they go into hip extension. So an articulated bridge is fine, but for this purpose, I'm trying to train her to stiffen here and only move at the ball and socket joint. So we're basically trying to make a stiff segment here so we can translate power through the hip and we don't have a wobbly back. The concept of that is because when you do a deadlift or a squat and you need to hip hinge, I don't want the back moving around when you've got load. You need to be stiffened through that lower back and core to able to handle that load through the spine. And then you can translate and transmit the power through the hips. So if that spine is moving around and you practice that moving around, you're gonna practice a bad movement pattern. You're not gonna be able to bear the load as efficiently. So for Claire, she has had to learn how, or if this was a patient or you, you've got to learn how to stiffen that core and keep all those segments stable. Because remember, there's one joint here, and that's the muscle group we're going to work on. There's multiple joints through that section here, and you've got to stabilize it with inner core and outer core bracing combined to stabilize all those little joints to stop them moving. That's hard. So that, if you're having problems with that, you've got to go back and work on your core toning, work on that bracing mechanism to make sure it's stable, so then you can do something like this. I see far too many people just jumping straight into a bridge and their spine's moving all over the shop. If that's one of you, work on your bracing first, then work on the bridge and you have so much more success. So if she braces here, the trick is, and the cue with this one, is to push those heels down. You use both the heel and the foot, so the whole sole of the foot heels and toes, because if you use toes and heels, you use quads, hammies, glutes, everything. But to get more hip extension activation, the bias is through the heel. So when she pushes up, go for me, pushing up, she's trying to think, instead of lifting my back, I want to push my heels down. So she's trying to think, push my heels down. Then when she comes down again, she's slowly taking weight out of the heels, not just dropping through the back. So starting here, that neutral, that spine's got to be just a little bit of neutral. She's got a tone in here, so she's tight, rock hard in there, yeah. And then if she can maintain it, she's got to breathe upstairs in the ribs, so she can't hold her breath. So breathing tight here, and then when she pushes her heels down, goes slowly halfway up, then she's got to squeeze her glutes and extend the hips and push her hips higher. So when she's up there, this is still neutral. This is not arched in extension, it's still neutral. All the movements come from here, and there's no movement sitting here at all. So drop down, so there's your pivot point. And that's hard. It's hard to try and keep a mobile moving segment of multiple joints stiff through range, and just telling your brain, just move at one, stiffen all the others. That's difficult. And that's why this exercise actually has to be taught well and practice well because it is the basis of a hip pinch. It is the basis of your squat, of your deadlift, of picking things off the floor with load, trying to maintain stability and bend through here. So if you're having trouble with your squat and your deadlift or you're getting back pain, you need to go back down to this one and work on that. Now the band is adding what I call load. There's no and the beautiful thing about this, there's no load through the spine by adding on load here. This load is more load for the muscles in the hip. So we're trying to get more muscle work done in a bridge without loading down through the pelvis like a hip thrust that you see in the gym. So we're not doing a hip thrust because at this stage, these, say these people are a bit broken or they need a bit of help with their back pain, they don't want any more load through their lower back. So to progress from a bridge without this, 
that band is simply designed for external rotator muscle work. That's what it's for. And it's a great way of progressing from not using the band to using the band. It makes it harder. And that's the idea of this. Instead of trying to make things more heavier, make them harder. And that's this little secret you can take home. So from there, in my rules, you need to try and think about trying to add stability again before you add load. One way of adding stability is going one leg. The other way of adding stability is putting your feet on a wobbly surface, okay? So if she was going to go one leg, the other thing I don't want her doing is single leg hip thrust. So let's show you a single leg hip thrust. So single leg hip thrust is this one. Now this is for me as a strength and conditioning exercise. That is absolutely fine if you are going great with a hip bridge and you want to work on some single leg work. The harder version of that, and what I use in physio, is actually coming up with two and then trying to stabilize with one. So, what I mean by that is keeping her feet wide parallel with the hips, knees, feet. When she does a normal bridge, comes up, then what she's got to try and do is work, think, think and work pretty hard. If she's going to raise her right, she's got to stabilize through her left, push through her heel more, use her glute more, and then raise one leg, hold it, come back down. Yep, put her foot back on the ground. That's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is when she comes up, holds it and then puts her foot down and changes straight to the other one, which is even harder because you have to translate from one side to the other and keep the pelvis level. So what I'm looking for is when she comes up, come up again for me, she's not allowed to drop her pelvis on one side. So when she raises one leg, we've got to look and make sure she can maintain. Can she keep this side up? and work hard on here and then put that leg down and then translate over to this one, bang, and then go on that side. And this is where you're going to see differences left versus right and their stability through the hips. And that stability is also through that posterior chain as well. She's, she's not just, say, if she's weak on one side, not just weak in the hips, she might be weak throughout the chain and that's something you've got to try and address. So that would be a really good way to increase stability. It's hard, that one, right? You feel she has to work pretty hard, especially with the band on. So if that band is used too much, take the band off. Do the bridge one leg without the band, then add the band on when you're confident and you're getting better. The third way of doing that, add on a ball like this. And now you're making the surface where she's putting and trying to transmit power through her heels that surface now is wobbly. So this is means she's going to need more core stability. She's going to have to generate more power through that whole system to stabilize that. So now come up with two, okay? So there's your glute bridge there. And you can see it's a little bit more advanced now. It's a little bit harder. It's going to be harder demand on the lower back. You okay with that one? Yeah, okay. And you can imagine trying to do that and taking one leg off. I think taking one leg off is far too advanced for physio. That's when you're going into the strength and conditioning realm. So when you're in a, so that patient level where you're recovering from some sort of injury, I would stick to two legs. That's enough stability for this type of exercise. You don't need to progress that any further. If you want to go one leg, keep that foot stable on the ground and work on your hip control rather than worrying about how fancy and cool it is to do one-legged hip bridges on a ball. All right, so that's your hip bridge. Check out those transitions, give that a go. See you next time.